Good. But we are here today um, and we are so pleased to be speaking with um, Sean Standing Bear and I'll pass it over to America to introduce First American Art Magazine and Sean. So thank sure. you all. Yeah, so this is, a, this is Collection Spotlight, a monthly program co-hosted by The Co uh, in New Mexico. And then First American Art Magazine, quarterly print and digital publication about indigenous arts, North and South America. We're coming to you from the uh, Wichita, the ancestral homelands of the Wichita people in Norman, Oklahoma. And it's my uh, profound pleasure to introduce, uh, it says Marla Redcorn, she set it up, but this is Sean Standing Bear, who is Osage. He's a cultural historian. He's also a visual artist and he was a former director of the Osage Nation Museum in Pahaska, where he is today. And I just wanna say the Osage National Museum is the first and longest continuing um, tribal museum in our country. So they really paved the way. So welcome, Sean. Oh, and I've disappeared to you. Oh, am I there? Yeah. Oh. And oh. I, I do want to interject really quickly that um, people, you will present and then people are welcome at the end to ask questions. And in the meantime, people are free to ask, put questions into the chat. Sounds great. So I take it I'm live right now. You are live. <laughs> it's real. Welcome to greetings, Zoom. Greetings, Earthlings, mm -hmm. and everybody else. And uh, good afternoon. And it's my pleasure to be here. I'd like to thank, uh, oh, glasses, please. New glasses. Mm -hmm. I'd like to thank uh, the Ralph T. Coe Center and all the people that uh, are affiliated and work to make this possible. And I just wanted a personal note, I'm, I, from what I believe, I, from what I've heard, that uh, you all should be commended for your efforts to preserve great works of art. And uh, these objects of patrimony, they're fewer and farther between, you know, and I think it's really nice. And I'd like to address the audience. Oh, I already did. And now the purpose at hand. And uh, basically I've been asked to uh, discuss, maybe decipher some of the attributes regarding uh, Osage ribbon work. And in this case is where we were dealing with wool and silk ribbon. And uh, I think the first uh, item on the docket is uh, RTC number NA1166. And this uh, woman's wearing blanket was made by Waltina Redcorn. And uh, I knew her and my grandmother really liked her. She's one of the sweetest people. Never saw uh, her utter a mean word. Recording in progress. She was also she was also a tremendous cook and she had an infectious laugh, but she was very skilled at what she did. And uh, I don't know if that like, oh, there it is. So. Now I have. Um, I'm gonna step back all the way in the beginning. Oh my God, that's beautiful. It is stunning and it's sort of wonderful for me to be able to unfold it carefully here. The fact that it's all red with regard to the Pahaska district, the Wahakuli district, um, that indicates that it's an eldest daughter uh, blanket, all red. And, uh, and men too, and the blankets, the wearing blankets, all red is reserved for eldest sons. Uh, red and blue for the second sons, uh, all blue or black for the third son. And, uh, but it's, it's really nice. And what I see when I look at this is there's a sense of duality. You notice the rows next to each other, they go, uh, I guess that's violet, violet and green, the background, violet, green, violet, green. Mm -hmm. It's not symmetrical. And it's, it's, it's done like that for a purpose. It denotes the two divisions of our tribe and the Tsishu or Sky people, uh, normally ceremonially, or, you know, regarded on the north side or the east, and the Honka or uh, Earth and Water people 
on that south side or west. I refer to those last, uh, the east and west with regard to life and death. Uh, the Osage had a huge sense of duality with regard to almost everything at one time. And, uh, but see, when I look at this, I see an anthropomorphic figure, a splayed anthropomorphic figure. I also see uh, arrows. And the thing is, is the images are disguised to get the full breadth and meaning. You would have to see, um, see it broken down a little bit. And I drew this up last night. As you can see, let's see, I need to warp my way oh, around. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm. I can't see if it's, tell me when it's there. Up just a little bit, there you go. That's where yeah. I am at the top. So that's perfect, gorgeous. Okay. So what, um, what I'm seeing here, you turn it on its side. This is an arrow. Let's see, let make sure. Can you see what I'm doing here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. This is They're the arrow head. You ignore this part and you, you extend this line out. It's the shaft and that's the fletching at the end. And there's one heading one direction and there's one going the opposite direction. And uh, they can go this way or they can be like that. But it's um, the background and the design, the background, the negative space, I'll call it. Let's say this is the positive space. The negative space has equal value. And there's a design in if, if, uh, when those two come together, it's a separate design. It's the green and the violet. Anyway, my, my main point is, is there's, it's also a anthropomorphic figure. The diamond can act as a body or the head. Um, there's another, you know, I don't even know if I'm holding this correctly. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. And, uh, but what it has to do is the symbolic man. And I, I guess you can look up uh, Bureau of Ethnology, Francis LaFleche's uh, works. Uh, with regard to the Osage and he discussed a symbolic man. And what that had to do with was an ideal of the perfect Osage, a uh, person who's tall and big and strong and could think on their feet and orator, um, have uh, high moral standards. Oh, you know, like the perfect person, but they never quite achieved that. Excuse me, I have to pick up these notes here. And there was also with regard, he forgot that my, there was also uh, the symbolic woman that was also revered. And these were concepts within the Nohonjinka society. And it was basically the old folks, the, the database, the elders. And we were a tribe at one time had a uh, peace chief, Tishu uh, Kaika, and, a, and a, a war chief, an earth chief, Honka Kaika. And uh, they got their moral authority and, uh, they're, and they're, they're sanctioned by the Nohonjinka. And that's kind of means like the little old men, Nohonjinka, uh, Nohonjinka. Anyway, but there was a path that ran down the village and from east to west. And then that sense of duality is demonstrated by uh, that path. And there was a ceremonial fire in the center of the village. There were like two uh, semicircles. But on, on the, uh, the side of that fire was the, the peace chief and the war chief. And, uh, and surrounding them were the Akita, the warrior clans or the police or soldiers of the, of the tribe. And uh, they were primarily a warrior, I see black bear, war eagles, panther people, and elk. Maybe I reversed it, I should have. Anyway, out of respect, I should get it right, but anyway. But uh, that design, that symbolic man had to do with uh, when they'd have these ceremonies, war ceremonies, or peace ceremonies, uh, and child naming rights and such, that there was the main facilitator of the uh, 
of the uh, ceremonies and his assistant. And the assistant would have that image on their drawn or painted on the rib cage. And if it was on the left rib cage, it had to do with peace. And if he was facing east, and if it was on the, and if it was on the right, and it was faced, and if he was facing north, when you walk into that big lodge there, you know it had to do with war. Anyway, these designs, uh, when you look at them, that's basically the same thing, but just different versions of the same thing. They're arrows and they're also anthropomorphic figures. And like my wife pointed out, it's just, you know, there's a lot of things, the way our perspective is uh, from the cradle, you know, we, we, we see things in a certain way. And one good example is um, that uh, cradle board you folks have. And uh, I don't know if we can pull that up some, and I'll, I'll uh, continue with some of these notes here, but I'd like to maybe talk about that cradle board for a minute. This is another piece where I, uh, I'll stand back. Oh, and I'm wow. flipping around with my lighting. I'm sorry. I feel like it's my lighting huge. is really bad. I know. That's I mean, I'm not, I'm not a tall person, but. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh my God, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, and yesterday we were talking about, uh, you know, they left me on the board almost too long. Like, <laughs> back of my head's flat. I can't wear ball caps or cowboy hats. They do this weird banana look. <laughs> and I can say my lips has been messed up. And, uh, but also too, when they leave you on a cradle board, don't take it personal folks too long it usually gives you that kind of a juggier kind of thing going on there but anyway <laughs> but you were telling I us you I, remember being in the cradle board as a baby i do uh my mother didn't believe me and uh i said yeah i hated it and she's been no you couldn't remember that and i said yeah i spent so much time in the kitchen they had me propped up on these uh, two chairs and it was kind of an astronaut position. I wish they leveled me up more, but you know, who's going to listen to a whiny baby? <laughs> um, but I, you know, and she said, there's no way you could have remembered that. And I said, yeah, I remember the wallpaper. And it was like this bright yellow, well, it was canary yellow, but real strong, uh, silver, white, and black. And I said, these big flowers, you know, and, and and he stripes in the background. And she said, well, oh my God. You know, she said, we, that's what the wallpaper looked like, you know, when we moved in that house. And, and I said, yeah, well, and, and she asked me, you know, why did you hate it so bad? And I said, well, one, when they put you on there, they wrap you up and it's too tight. Yeah. And so you kind of stretch to try and, you know, get some, you know, some movement, movement. and the, the moment, you breathe out and relax. You get you sink in a little deeper, and it's just so frustrating. I can remember like oh, back, yeah. back in against there, was, you know, really, really crying hard, and, and I think they either threw a paper towel roll back there or something. <laughs> that, you... made, that made me madder because I really couldn't get that pain going, you know, and justify those tears. But yeah. uh, you know, um, and of course, when they had to to undo you, take you apart, and Ah, and they, you know, you have to grab the little boys a certain way to keep from getting it a straight blast. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you, can, you <laughs> can imagine. Anyway, it was quite an ordeal, but they said, you know, the, you always knew it's better than a bell on a cat. You know, you can, you always knew where they were and you can hang them up on a tree if you're outside, keep the dogs away from them and stuff, you know. But anyway, I, um, Oh yeah, and the bells had bells hanging down there, and and on mine there was it, this isn't the exact one, but it's very similar. This is a uh, uh, let's see, there we go. I guess can you guys see that? Yeah, so that was a charm that they put on the sacred, band. Sacred Heart, yeah, it's it's on uh, red uh, wool. Oh, I can see what I'm doing now. Oh, thank you. So anyway, but that was hanging on the end of uh, of uh, those bells, and they had a little red plume hanging on there a little eagle plume and uh, they had a little bell on there and they taught me how to blow on that 
Oh, cool. I don't know. And it, it, they blew on it. And then I guess, you know, monkey see, monkey do. But uh, I blew on it and it would spin around. And they said, after a while, you'd just pass out. And I prevail. <laughs> like that. And uh, here's a picture of me. I told you yes the other day. Oh, I cool. Let's see, where is it? Let me get it. Let's see. Yeah. I could always tell, you know, putting me down. I knew it was nap time. And that's another, you know. Oh, sorry. Can, can we see it again? I'm so sorry. I oh, tried I'm to sorry. get it a little get larger. In, oh, uh, that's sweet. Thank you. That that was those red dots on there. I remember oh. those things too. I see, you know, and there was another one that was blue, kind of uh, dark blue. But, oh, also, this is I brought this in as far as uh, the anthropomorphic figure and uh, arrows. You guys might want to see this. Oh, yeah, that's great. Tell how it's, and, and then also, let's see, you know, and you can look at it this way. Yeah. And then, you know, the, the reason why some of these designs are kind of, they were secret mm -hmm. and they were related to each clan and they, they took their knowledge, clan knowledge very seriously. And I was warned and always told all my life, that, you know, I, I look, I'm black pair people, you know, wasape people. And uh, we don't, we discuss or uh, any other clan other than our own it's kind of a, it's taboo you know forbidden and but but we, i perceive things or the black people perceive certain things or events through a certain lens and uh it's it's different you know it's it's uh based on that warrior society and you know, there were, there were, you know, you, you got to be careful judging historical events by today's standards. I have some other images here of, of uh, broadcloth ribbon work. Oh, these are bent well wedding. Ah, hey, my little brother and I and my grandmother in the background sitting on a bench. And by the way, we're going to Elonska. Let's see. You check out that ribbon work because yeah. cool. your grandma back here in the corner, well, on the other side, but anyway. Yeah, I can't Let's get in here on that ribbon work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, really handsome. Oh, well, I fooled her, my wife. <laughs> Who's here today? Betty Jo. <laughs> Betty Jo. Yeah. You, you don't want to get on camera at all? Or are you shy? <laughs> She's shy, I think. Oh yeah, let's see. Here's a little over oh. say hi. <laughs> Thank you. Here's the, another little border. Let's see that you can see. Whoa, it's yeah, arrows. you can see the arrows really beautifully yeah. there. That's really and, lovely. Uh, and you can see the anthropomorphic figure too. So it, well, it takes a little creativity, but you you gotta you yeah. gotta attract the fletching and it, it, you but the diamond between the two arrows when they meet, that's the you, head. You could trace, what I was trying to say, I guess, you know, we, there's a time we didn't talk about these things, but most of those folks are gone now. But uh, it has to do with those tattoos. My uh, great-grandmother, that she had those all over her body. And uh, when she get out of the bathtub, my dad said, you know, she looked like she was pink and blue, but you get right up on her, it, those, those um, marks were black. And uh, he said, um, when she was getting older, uh, th that wasn't ink, it was ash. And for the record, uh, that was derived from elm trees. That was elm ash, as they call it around, elm ash. But anyway, that's what they use for those tattoos. My grandma Julie, uh, she, uh, I mean, like I said, she had, uh, she, uh, you know, she's one of those, the spiders on her hands and those cosmic elements. But a lot of those images are cut in half and turned around to, and they're disguised because that Nohonshing uh, society was reserved for people of serious minds and, uh, respect for religious things. 
And they, the reason why they, that whole order was created because they didn't trust humans. They needed order because uh, we were in a chaotic time. You know, at the dawn of time, you know, we were affiliated with that Mississippian period at one time, but we left. We were seduced, I believe, by the bison. But anyway, mm -hmm. yeah. it was war for a while there. And, but hold on a second. I digress. Pat, where am I? On these images. Oh, my gosh. Excuse me. Would you be um, willing to talk about a little bit about the practical sides of the cradle board? The practical sides, uh, the the Romanesque arches on the back, those are air holes, and then the two little holes below that, those is for the thong to hang you up on a tree or whatever. Oh. Uh, let's see, on the side for the bow, there should be two little holes. And uh, the bow, the, the boards itself is made either like maple or hickory or something that can bounce or can take a shock. And so if it falls or something? You wouldn't want to, oh yeah. And you wouldn't want to um, make it out of cedar because it's too brittle. Mm. And it can be kind of dangerous when it Yeah, you wouldn't want splinters. And uh, at the bottom of the board, there's two holes too. And that is for, uh, hey, I've got oh, yeah. the pictures. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, those, oh, cool. and there's a loop there and it's tied and see here's a picture of my dad and uh let's see wool rock book they did recently let me get yeah, in i'm there. gonna try to make right. that bigger you can un that is your dad in a cradle board yeah so and that's see, great he's got that little piece all tied up and bundled up i think yeah. there's a better picture uh this is my uh Great grandparents. This is actually what my grandma Julia was talking about just now. And there she is. And she's got a heck of a rhythm work. Oh my God, that's beautiful. And it's got those hands there. Yeah. And uh, you notice that the bottom of those hands are straight. Those aren't friendship hands, those are trophy hands. Okay. That's another story. Yeah. But, um, it was tough times. And that's Chief Fred Lookout, my uh, great grandfather. One of those. Okay. And uh, she's named after one of those arrows, the black uh, arrow shaft. In fact, my oldest daughter is also. Anyway, but I thought I had another baby boy picture. Maybe I'm a liar. Anyway. Well, if you right. find it, and then I didn't quite catch what the bottom two holes were for. Oh, it's a loop that uh, you tie on the bow, they see the beadwork or, uh, or yarn work, and they would come down and meet about, oh, 10 inches uh, from the bottom. And it's, it's a loop and it's, it's made to stretch and, and it has to be really strong. And that is part of the, uh, the board that, that uh, let's see if you can see it here. Yeah. Okay, cool. See, see there's ribbon work on the song. And then it goes down and it actually is like, it's like, it's, it torques. Okay. Inter yeah. Okay. I see it. I see it. And, and that would kind of protect something from bumping the baby too. Yeah. And, and then of little course. Little pillows on the bottom, you know, put the little feet cool. on it. And, um, but yeah, I hated it. <laughs> but and you know, it kept you from getting smushed or lost. My mom wouldn't uh, let them, my my uh, young my sister on the board and she, she's got this it's really strange I used to walk up and feel the back of her head <laughs> good thing about having a flat head back there is it's like a Lincoln log you won't roll downhill very far oh, no. and these big beautiful ears by the way my grandmother told me that when she was young that the Osage women were very attracted to men with prominent noses and big ears. Ears, okay, ears are what you look for, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, but you know, mine though, you know, some windy days they hardly let me out, you know? <laughs> anyway. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the tax. I don't know if you can see that, oh, my line yeah. is great. The but... brass tax. Um, yeah. Those, those symbols on, on that are carved and colored, yeah. by the way, you notice they're usually always 
uh, made from the older boards. Uh, mm -hmm. Exterior enamel paint. Okay. And they're usually secondary or tertiary complementary colors. Yeah. But they they used to go. I I was talking to some my uncles and and usually men not always but usually men are asked to make this for the relatives. And um, they would go to the hardware store and say, "Well, I want green, but I don't want any green that everybody else has. I want my own." You know this. <laughs> inherent dna collective uh competition with regard to aesthetic art and food yeah so i'm not going to touch that one yeah, the colors it. on this are really really striking and beautiful it doesn't come through as well on the screen but it's like a really rich red and then this almost as a, a blue a little I've, greenish blue and then a bright yellow so the old old ones, the real old ones, were, were, they, they would burn them and then carve yeah. away out of the burnt surface. Yeah. And uh, But they all had that Romanesque archway. Those are air holes. You, you know, they hit the kid on the back of the neck. He said there was for a breeze. Mm-hmm. To cool the... Well, they put a, put a muslin cloth on you, too, to keep the flies off of you. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> but, uh, they would sneak into the back sometimes. Uh, I remember I learned how to hate, uh, what are those things called? Oh, yeah, horse flies. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. Man. Yeah. Anyway, there's so, a reason for them, I'm sure. Yeah, this particular cradle board is dated to about 1900. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. it's about right to you? Good. Oh, and those, those tacks. Yeah. I have my, my dad's uh, board, and I remember one day my grandmother, you know, and, and those, they were really nice. And by the way, they, I guess, uh, I don't know who first put tax in. in uh, it's, there were different ways of looking at the symbolic representation of it. Uh, but also too, I think it's, a lot of it has to do with, it goes back to those whole parfleshes, mm -hmm. family designs, and it's about ownership. And you can identify them a long ways off if someone's just accidentally picks them up and they're walking off with it, you know? <laughs> Uh, hey, it happens. I've been, yeah. it happens. Yeah, but what was I going to say? <laughs> oh, yeah. My grandmother said, uh, come in here and uh, go get a, a kitchen knife. Uh, okay, you know, it's a table knife. And I, you know, I said, and she just pop all these tacks off of here. You know, there's a few of them I don't like. They're getting black around the edges. Okay. Some of them have that green, that malachite growing on them. And I'm just like, well, I could just polish them up a little bit. No, pop them off. What did I tell you? You know, and <laughs> so I popped them off and she said, here's a little, I don't know where she'd always come up, little baby food jars. You know, and she, anyway, here, put them in here for safekeeping. And you never know when you're going to need. Anyway, it's a depression era thing I was raised. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, uh, but I, when I popped them off, I looked and they were like, uh, one by three other holes that would have been there oh. and instead of cleaning they just they liked that shiny brand new brass look i guess i mean you know and then i then i mentioned that to her and she said uh huh you figured that out all by yourself anyway <laughs> did you want to go um segue to the dance mirror since it's also a wooden structure yeah. And it also uh, has sure, sure, yeah. sure, sure. So, oh look, wow, oh, you can see the computer. <laughs> but um mm -hmm. I'll turn it this way so that we can oh, see yeah. the, oh, the yeah. background's beautiful. Okay. But still, regardless of any embellishment, that is a Christian cross. Okay. A and the rectangles are a product, the unevenness of them is a product of that uh, fact. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the Osages have been courted by Christianity from all angles and all denominations for a long time. Those triangles I can identify with a little bit, you know, on the bottom, I would think it kind of resembles some kind of claw or talon. Yeah. But it also... I don't know. I don't see a hiko there. You know, this, we talked about that, that, that ceremonial philosophical idea 
and, and it, it's like a straight line and then four lines coming down from it. It's like your hand. And then in the way it, it has been described is a snare. And in your life essence comes in and it enters and you're an infant. And then you start growing up and you're a young person and then you're an ad, a, adolescent and then you become an adult and then you enter midlife and then you get into old age and then you pop out at the end and you go home for a while and then you somehow end up in a one of those hoikas, those uh, snares. Those snares are depicted too on those women's elbows, by the way, and those tattoos. And uh, that on their on their arm there, it's a it's a knife, and it's the authority to butcher and to slaughter animals. You know, not everybody had the authority to do everything they wanted in the, in the tribe. All these clans claimed different plants different insects, different animals as their life symbols. But the woman, the Osage women, they had the gardens and they had supreme say over those gardens. And they could barter. They could barter for the right for other people to come and harvest out of their gardens or barter for the right to grow specific, specific uh, quantities. Um, in fact, of the 13 Odon, the uh, war honors, the number one to be achieved was protecting the women in their fields. They're very vulnerable. The enemy appreciated the fact that the women were the vessels and the crucibles of our culture. And as we were reminded, we're all we are all sons of mothers, never forget it. But when those warriors were protecting those women, they were also protecting the future of the tribe. And children were considered evidence of Wakanda or God's will. Wakanda, my grandmother said, it was the unknowable force that caused all things to be placed into motion. And, you know, rocks are even in motion. They're alive. They come up from the ocean and they roll down and turn to a beach sand for a while and other things from there. But also, uh, we saw those ligands, that rib work, ribbon work, and had that line. They came up and there were three levels. Actually, the bottom was the fourth level. And I saw that as the meaning. Those were the four worlds depicted four worlds of the earth people and four worlds of the sky people, the earth, the honka, and the wasaji, the water people, and the sky people, the tziju people, the peace people. But that, there she is right there. And if you turn it on a side, horizontally there, you can see, and it kind of looks like a hill or a mountain. And I don't know, there was a time when those mesas were big and important in our lives. It goes back to the Mississippian times. But those four worlds, different people have talked about them, you know, made reference to them. And I asked my elders about that. And I'm just going to say, this is what I was told. And most everything I know is what I've been told. But the four worlds... One is the seen, anything you can see. Two, the unseen, the things that you know to be there, but you can't see them. And then there's the known, the things you know to be true through experience or being taught. And then there's number four, the unknowable. And that was the one that kept everybody going. The hope was in there, survival, everything. The unknowable was Wakanda's will. And they were always striving for that. The Osage used to cry in the morning, communal cry at sunrise. You know, that, that morning star would let them know, get ready, here comes the sun, and it would pull that sun up. 
And as soon as that sun was revealed, just as soon, there was just this Neolithic outpouring of emotion and tears. And, it, 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 and it, even the dogs and the horses were compelled to cry, I've heard. But anyway, this gun trenching moan, collective moan, as soon as the sky was revealed under that sun, they would stop those tears. And then they would get on with the day and the first meal and and the Hong Jingo would call everybody who had significant dreams and then just tell it to them. They didn't care about the, they say, I was told, they didn't care about the details of the dream. They just wanted to know when you woke up that moment, were you, what was your emotion? how did you feel? I mean, was it apprehension? Was it joy? Was it appreciation? What was it? And you tell them and then they'd say, okay, next, you know, and then they, have their meetings and continue their struggle to survive. And that's what that tribe is about, collective effort, interwoven lives to where everybody had purpose. Those 24 clans, they couldn't have the serious ceremonies without a full quorum of every clan present because some clans brought words to the ceremony some brought objects to be combined some things brought motions and acts and everyone had equal footing and everyone was respected when the early visitors came to the osage the peace chief they would avoid that war chiefs and those folks they were a little aggressive but they told those they would get some of those to be escorts for their travelers. And they say, you can go anywhere and talk to anybody in this village and find the least of us. And that is who we are. Because they always come in and say, who are you actually? And say, well, go find the least of us. And that's who we are. And by the way, a little point of history there with regard to the black bear people, uh, when they were chosen to be a policemen or the Akitas, the guardians of the land and the people, they were asked to give up two things. And it's what they used to dominate since the dawn of time was their size and their strength. And these, these, these priests, these people, the elders came and they said, we need something to enforce the will of the chiefs and enforce our will. And we need a police force. And we've come to you and we're going to ask you to give up the two things you love the most. But we can't go forward unless you can do that. And they asked us to give up our anger and to give up our thirst for vengeance. And they debated and talked about it for a while. And then they agreed. Anyway. Well, that's a little bit about the Black Bear people. There was mentioned that um, Osage, I'm also... Uh, uh, Oglala uh, Sioux, as my grandpa would say. I know that Lakota and all that. But, and also I'm Muskogee Creek from my mom's side. And guess what? I'm just as proud of my Irish and Scotch blood and my English blood. And as a lot, I got a lot of French blood. This Cupid's bow gives me away. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I... It looks like we're getting close to the question and answer time. I hope I've okay. uh, given, you know, I have fulfilled some of the, my mission today was to try and just describe the Osage perspective on viewing its own ribbon work. Because like my wife said, we take it for granted. You know, we were just, when you're raised upon, when you're in the process of doing, it's hard to look back and reflect. So, uh, you know, it's just like, I never said why to my elders. We were just told to do it by them and we did it because, well, they, we knew they loved us and they've never lied to us. And uh, anyway, oh, speaking of, I have another thing to show you guys. I just found these. Uh, these are, um, what? Oh, no, these are some personal artwork. There's some people like so that. Stuff. Where can one see your artwork? I don't know. Is it in any collection? It's called the Conquering Eagle with Warpath. Nice. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, he's got an attitude. But that isn't the picture I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you this little turtle is from Hiko. My grandmother told me that she wanted me to illustrate this little oral story. And uh, I have no idea where that is. So anyway, I had an envelope. Oh, maybe it's in here. Ah, here it is. Okay. Sorry. Oh yeah, here's Osages with ribbon work on um, yeah, wool. thank you. Oh, beautiful. Blankets. Those are blankets or not leggings? They're blankets. Okay. So uh, some of these guys, like, anyway, we, we, they, yeah. they're all, they've all got a story, let me tell you. There's one so last blanket. Little, this is a little turtle that went on the warpath. Oh, could you found a it? a story, yeah, I got it right here. I'm trying to see which one's best. I think this one might be. Yeah, there oh my go. gosh, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So he's, you know, he's got to go get, you know, That's seek beautiful. revenge for his father getting killed. And he basically drives his mom crazy. Mm. Anyway, you don't really want to worry your mother unnecessarily is the moral of that story. But they're cautionary tales, these hikos. And some of them, and this one had uh, little songs to it. And there's this other one that my kids grew up listening to, the Wapoka story about an owl. The great gray owl. And uh, anyway, it haunts them to this day. <laughs> Here's a little clay board I did. I just found, and it has ribbon oh, work cool. on the edge or the broadcloth. I thought I'd bring that in. It's one of those what, scratch boards or whatever you call it. Yeah, yeah so, you know, a the, uh, And we have a fondness for uh, some owl feathers. That's, those are uh, horned owl. Yikes. We use them in different ways in a Native American church. But anyway, um, I'm sorry I, if I ramble on too much and I didn't know oh, this has been great. All the things you wanted to hear about. But I, I, I just didn't want, I just wanted to try and be understood, and I hope I am. Absolutely. And uh, well, I'll find out, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Could we so, take a peek at one more wearing blanket really quickly? So this one more wanted to see this one last blanket. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Because this one is stunning. Well. Just to revisit the ribbon work. Oh, okay. That's just like it had to do with the Native American church. Mm -hmm. And that's like night and day, life and death. And those colors. Let me see. Oh, nice. Is that kind of a goldenrod? Will it show through? Yeah. There we go. That's ah, true. yes, 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 yes. Nice hand stitch, it looks like. Is it? No, I think it's machine stitched. Treadle. Treadle <laughs> and somebody can, <laughs> it takes a while to get in the groove on that. Yeah. You know, it's always best oh, to have. Yeah. So this might be an earlier person, like a beginning artist? Um, hmm, yes. Yeah, see, see, some people, is the decoration See some some designs you're imbued with the power of that lightning on the on the border there, and some of it acts as a protection. That life, that this green to me, this this mm -hmm. this, this is, has to do with uh, life. Green and that blue is not corpse blue, and my people it's, it's more a uh, uh, sky blue, and that's that white and that that goldenrod is like the sun, clear day. You know, it, it just it just screams life to me, mm -hmm. and uh, oh, you can really see the stitching. <laughs> I, should, I wish I had a blanket. I show you how they wear those things. Maybe next time, but yeah, yeah we, we, we put it in and then pull it in, and then it has a special look to it. Well, hey, maybe could, I got my picture of my grandfather with it. Could we look closely at that selvage? How those two selvages are joined. Uh, Let's see. Let's oh, beautiful. Let's see. Yeah. As it, as you can see how together. they're folded over. The selvage edge, you say, uh, on that blanket right there. Yeah. Oh, right in the middle. Now, is it overlapped? It is on the, on yeah. the center. It yeah. Is, because I've is. never seen them butt right up against. And you can okay. tell me that did too by the fuzz of the silk. That's silk in that selvage edge in there. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, the turn of the century, you know, 20s, you yeah. know, around there. But you never know, you know, that World War One had a heck of a, a 
effect on us. Mm. So, but that's beautiful. And I see there's an anthropomorphic figure. I don't know if you can see it, it's plain as day to me. And then there's the arrows. You just take off the arms and then you have the fletching in the back and then there's the arrowhead and the shaft. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and then you flip it upside down to get the sky version. Cool. So it's sky and earth all meeting at that head. Yep. And, the, you know, it's beautiful. I mean, to me, it's very Osage. I could tell 50 yards away it's Osage. Mm -hmm. What's funny is some of those patterns are very hard to do, some of the intricate ones. And I like that because it keeps the hobbyists at bay. <laughs> Sorry, I, 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 I don't want to You're be fine. negative. <laughs> you know, some of the people have to hold back what they, some of their family heirlooms because they're afraid of unscrupulous um, people uh, running with their family patterns and designs. Right. Also, you know, it's not just clan affiliation, but family considers some of those patterns that are composed and multi-layered symbolic representations but a lot of those uh, blankets have little stories to go with them. And they're like mnemonic devices to remember events or deeds, you know, by their relatives. So, you know, that's what it gets really personal. And what, what I always felt it strange when people would walk up, oh, I like your ribbon work. And then they ask the one question you don't never want to be asked. They'd say, so what's that mean? Mm -hmm. What's that supposed to be? And I, I yeah. usually say, well, it's complicated. We can talk about it later, you know, or something. But yeah, it's kind of insulting, you know. But then again, I was raised, you know, people, you meet, go up to meet a new, an old Osage or whatever, they'd say, who are your people? They wouldn't say, hi, glad to meet you or whatever. They'd say, who are your people? <laughs> and, if you, and if you didn't come right out and tell them, they'd say, well, if I know who your people are, I know who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, and something too, my grandmother would say, you know, you can judge who I am by my enemies. And I go, wow, okay. <laughs> she was very masterful at passive aggressiveness. Excellent. <laughs> but, you know, most of such women are experts at killing with kindness. Mm. And I, I, I love, uh, you know, around here, if you really want to win a fight, get some powerful Osage women to do it for you. <laughs> That's a one of those things, you know, uh, men, they were good on the battlefield, but when they <laughs> took that war and, you know, and this cavalry and prohibition and all this stuff, when they took that war away from the, the cultural aspects of the Osage, well, they never took it away from the women. And women can really wage war. They make men do crazy things. It's true. Yeah, no argument. So yeah, uh, I can I, I can like allow everyone to unmute, and if anyone wants to, um, they can ask. Uh, we can open it up to discussion if people want to ask questions. If I can't, if I don't know, I'll just say I don't know. And I can start. Um, many of these items were collected from Andrew Gray, who was the Osage elder. Mm -hmm. um, can you speak to who Andrew Gray was? Andrew Gray, son of uh, Andrew Buddy Gray. Um, and, uh, oh, Andrew is a great guy, you know? I mean, he is. And, <laughs> oh, is uh, he still with us? What? Oh, but, you know, but anyway, uh, Andrew, you know, he's, you know, I grew up with him and he's, he, he's just always been a great guy, you know, and we all have our nicknames. And I'll keep that to myself. Okay. <laughs> I mean, but, so, you know, we all go through huge, changes, but you know. Two and, generations. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, sorry no. Go ahead. Go ahead. There's, there's two generations of Andrew Grace. So oh, there's oh, Buddy. Okay. His father. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, so there's I have, Ted might have actually gotten these pieces, some of these pieces from uh, Buddy, Andrew Buddy Gray, is ah, what it is. Well, that's Andrew's one. father. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, he has a story here about um, the the boys' dance outfit that um, well, he had a store from. down here, yeah. and uh, uh, long back in the '60s and such. And then they, I think they went to uh, Denver, and then he came yeah. back in the uh, early '70s. You know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. was the store called? 
Well, it's now Clifton's. I think it was, what was, do you remember? Uh, let's see. Um, oh, I can't remember. I'm sorry. Okay, it'll come to you at three in the morning. <laughs> yeah, usually about 28 hours away, the answer mm -hmm. lies in one of those mental Rolodexes. So I'll put the query in. Yeah, Karen, did you have yes. a question? Yes, I just want to say it's great to hey. see Sean. It's been a long time. Hey. Uh, Sean is being very modest. Um, many of us fortunate folks are, um, we have our own collections of Sean's amazing work, whether it's fine art or jewelry <laughs> or dolls or, um, I mean, just wonderful stuff. But uh, like I said, he's he's very modest and humble, but you can see perhaps one of his large pieces here in my, in my home from um, the exhibition in St. Louis, uh, as well as, you know, in addition to the art, um, master storyteller. So I just want to give my little shout out and say, hey. And hey to Patty oh. Joe too. Good to see by, the, by the way, uh, and say hey to uh, Johan for me, please. Will do. Will do. <laughs> Got to do some fishing and some woodcutting. Yeah, oh, uh, been doing both. But the title of that painting isn't it? Like the Osage Witness to Discovery. <laughs> yeah. Wait, could you say that again, please? Yeah, I think it's called uh, the o Osage Witness, the, the, the founding of St. Louis. Of St. Louis, yes. And they're across the river, a little speck, you know, little ships. And they got a cross or two up, you know. And But this guy, this young guy's kind of panicking. He's like, you know, uncle, uncle. And he's just like, calm down. We, 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 we've we expected <laughs> it. You know? We got it under control. You know? And there's these Shoto boys we've heard about. And we're going to get them under our wing. So, <laughs> and by the way, Karen is a musician and got one of the most lovely voices on earth. Oh. And uh, uh, have, where are you playing now? Well, uh, we actually performed uh, at the First Americans Museum grand opening on yeah. Saturday and Sunday, September 18th and 19th. Oh, uh, well, wow. Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty wonderful. Have you been watching this this whole thing going on? Yeah, I try to tune in to everything that's that's happening right now. With Did the I, uh, was, was I being vague or, I mean, was I being uh, clear? I was trying to, I don't know, I yes, probably did it. it. An hour is not long enough. So I'm hoping this will be the first of maybe uh, several <laughs> things, you know? Because when you mentioned Wapoka story, I'm like, I'm ready to hear that again. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the sun's out right now, and it's not. Has, we got to wait to that first frost. Yeah, yeah. Restrictions for those 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 uh, little fairy tales. It's like because they're considered like little lies, and there's guardians in the world of spiders and snakes and birds, and they can conspire to punish you for telling lies. But when you when it, after that first frost, the snakes kind of hibernate, and the birds not so many around, the insects you can get away with it. And uh, but it's also scarier when it's cold and dark. On that story. That oh yeah. It, you know. Uh, <laughs> it, yeah, the similar, you know, and just a little little more information on the hikos. Uh, and Garrick Bailey is really a good source to, to talk about those, but. Uh, they're like I said, cautionary tales, like kind of like Aesop's uh, fables. There's always a, a moral to the story, and it's bizarre. You know, some of them are very sad. Some of them are, you know, you know, you, you can't just trust anybody. Stories. Some of them. I'm trying to think of one that was a, a good outcome. Oh, yeah. There's some that are ironic, but there's uh, more cautionary tales than anything. Mm -hmm. You know, the details leading up to the events, uh, it depends on who's hearing the story. The older kids want to get to the juicy parts and little kids want to hear everything and then hear it and hear it again. And, and that's what happens with these stories. You know, when you hear these stories told the same way, I find myself moving my hands like my grandmother or changing my voice a little bit. And uh, especially when it gets a little scary. You know. <laughs> 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 so what else is going on out there is olivia there she is Kelly. 
Anybody, any other questions? Anybody has Olivia, talking about? I think she wants to say something. Okay, go ahead. Hey, baby. Hey, I just finished teaching, but I got to hear the second half of it. I'm still in my classroom. All right, all right. Uh, uh, your mom's here, so I, you know, keep me honest. <laughs> I tried not to lie too much. Well, I don't really, I'm not a good liar. I would smile <laughs> at yeah, people. I was not either. I get that from you. Yeah, I guess, you know, it just can't get by with it. It's those nuns. In the oh, yeah. <laughs> don't we know Scobiscum? You know, <laughs> I, I love the Benedictine nuns that helped raise me, uh, even, the, even the really mean ones. They, they, all, they all, all did it out of love. No, so well maybe some of you all know this but uh the osage nation museum is hosting another talk this evening um that will oh. be online i put a link in but you can find it i found it on facebook but um it's uh osage women creatives in conversation so oh. yeah, continue what the time? conversation sorry what time is it it will be, be 7 p.m to 8 30 p.m central okay. time okay it's nice when multiple people in the same time zone. But um, that's that'll be the Osage Museum. I was seeing that one. And that's I believe that's free as well. All right. Cool. Yeah, right. so do we have any final questions? Well, let's see. I've been playing a uh, baritone ukulele stringed up with violin strings. <laughs> I, know that. I don't even know the tuning, but it's kind of a hillbilly tuning and I can play just about any, you know, rock and roll song is crazy. You know, I mean, it really is. You, know? you need to come down and perform for First Americans Museum. And if you go to Santa Fe, you could do a concert at the Cove. Yes, I was going to say. Come My old uh, stomping grounds. I went to IAIA. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I, you were with, uh, I don't know if you heard of TC Cannon. Yes. We, we played on Wednesday nights with Bob Garcia and him and I. And, uh, we we uh, love to get that story. It's uh, he was a great guy. I didn't even know he was the TC Cannon until one day he was just introduced to me as T, and I figured it was <laughs> like a beat, beatnik T E A or something. You know? and, no, he was TC Cannon, and uh, we had some real interesting conversations. Uh, but he was a great guy. Uh, so uh, Ryan Flayhive needs to, if you're willing to be um, do an oral history with uh, Ryan Flayhive, the archivist at IAI, uh, he's amazing. Oh, think, yes. yeah. My uh, Lewis Ballard, my uncle Lewis Ballard was one of the founders of that. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I can, I know some crazy stories about the Honors House, the Honor House for the Honor Students. And when I was there back in 75, 70, yeah. <laughs> Uh, they didn't have a description for what an honor student was. So mm -hmm. they boarded it up. And Presley LaFontaine and Alex Jacobs, I think, they, well. Yeah, they're both still in Santa Fe. They're both still active. We, oh, those guys? Uh-huh. Wow. I named my oldest son after Alex. Oh. Levi Alexander. That's sweet. Alexander Abraham Jacobs. Anyway, and Presley, and he saved my life a couple times. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Literally, uh, but yeah, I uh, <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot of things I have to take to the grave. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I used to read they, uh, they were they were they still are very they've affected my life uh, in a positive way, you know, and I carry all my, all my days, and also uh, very uh, and. Uh, this is President Barry Coffin and Doug. Uh, Tom Coffin. Oh, okay. Senator Tom Coffin. But, I don't know uh, Tom. Man, we had some adventures. Anyway, and my, <laughs> my, my, uh, my, my, one of my mentors, Carl Ponka, he taught sculpture out there. Yeah. And, and he invented uh, Ponka Punch. This is Fosse, the uh, uh, carpentry guy. <laughs> I wasn't really in his class, but I walked by it. He uh, you know, gave me psychotherapy and <laughs> told me what not to do. And that was great because I was doing some wrong things and didn't even realize it. So he was really a great guy. And, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I had a good time out there. Um, well, we've got to get you back out. 
be lovely yeah. to have you in in the collection spend some time person. yeah oh, uh, it'd It'd be my honor. pleasure and i worry about those armbands now don't oh, I didn't, we didn't don't, even talk about the armbands don't take the don't take the patina off but oh, just no. the highlights so nice. just like a hand buffing with the light cotton yeah. cloth to just uh, accentuate the design and then yeah. some real pure uh, oil, like sewing oil or something like that, real mineral oil, but wipe it on and then wipe it off. Just leave a film. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. And- uh, I'll hold they, them up for you real if, fast, even though we're done. Sure, yeah. Because if you don't, malachite will form and start corroding and eating into the silver. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Morning star, evening stars. Well, I see there, my friend. There again. Mm -hmm. My little brother's got a set of old time ones. I don't know what they use for a chisel, maybe a screwdriver. Oh, yeah. But, uh, hmm. See the clouds up there? And that might be water. That's what I'm seeing. But on top of those, on the edges, there's clouds nice and do we know if this is silver sterling or german silver and german silver german silver oh, because so it's it tougher. black yeah. on the back okay yeah. because and you were saying these were actually armor that they were protection yeah that's like what physical. they were used for in like uh, bracelets and they were made to you know hand-to-hand -hand combat and to take a to deflect a hatchet or a, mm -hmm. a war club or something you know it would do it and those gorgettes yes. they got from the french those were really prized, the silver ones, you know, the artillery uh, batteries and such. But uh, yeah, and that's a, that's like the whole cycle of the day and night. Everything's there. We'll have to get you uh, over. It'd be so nice. Yeah. What says it there, uh, Wow. You, I like you that. Know. I love that. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, I'm not, I just said I loved it. Oh, cool. So sorry. Um, you mentioned that you uh, were contributing author to Art of the Osage. So anyone who doesn't have that book, Art of the Osage, um, is a good thing to follow up with. Art of the Osage at the Washington Press and yeah. uh, Osage in the Invisible World, Norman uh, Press at University of Oklahoma and uh, Gary Bailey. And uh, he's really, he knows his business. He was, uh, and Francis LaFleche, for all you folks Very who want to check out the Bureau of Technology and Alice Fletcher's work, and um, but don't go too crazy on that stuff because uh, a lot of that stuff they were going through the motions at the end there and having people, you know, uh, just they were just going through the motions and they were getting pressure from. The different Christian and uh, denominations and such, and anyway, uh, it all kind of uh, World War One kind of put an end to all that, really. But some of those people lived on some of those old priests into the thirties. I think a few of them in the forties, early forties. But um, well, forty nine, I can remember. Yeah. Anyway. Those ways, though, those prayers and those things that were consecrated, those prayers were really big, as I'd say, very, some of them, they're still going strong. And, uh, but we, you got to be careful, some of those designs and how you approach them, you know, because uh, I was always worn too, and especially in silver work. When you start dealing with cosmic elements, you'd better be have a respectful mind while you're doing that. And like I say, some of my my mind starts to drift. One of my uh, tricks was I jump into Hail Marys, or Betty <laughs> wow. songs, you know, or something like that. <laughs> and uh, you know, just get your head focused there. Yeah. But um, anyway, um, but you have to be careful. Like lightning, you start messing with that. And, but then again, too, some people come and they requested certain things and they say, just do this and don't worry about what it means. Just just reproduce this and forget you ever did. <laughs> uh, and I go, OK. <laughs> and, uh, I never I never uh, have fallen back on that out of respect. And I guess a little fear and not necessarily fear from humans. Yeah. 
if you're from the cosmic elements that you'd be offended. You know, you don't, you got to know your limitations according to Dirty Harry. And uh, it's true. It's nice to know your limitations. You don't step on so many toes. Well, thank you so much for sharing some of your considerable knowledge with us today. And I'm really glad we could look at these artworks and see some of your artwork too. Thank you, Karen, for sharing that painting. Well, I, I hope, uh, hope I was more uh, enlightening than confusing. And uh, <laughs> Olivia, Absolutely. see you later, baby. And mm -hmm. uh, Karen, take care. Love and kisses to Johan, that sweet man. Mm -hmm. And I hope he's doing mm -hmm. well. Doing great. Uh, love your sexy hair. Oh, thank you. <laughs> get in here. Get in here. Let's see, see the. Dad has so many paintings in private collections. So I have a lot too. If I were at home, I would show you all as well. But there's he has so much artwork out there. It's insane. I don't even know when I find time to do it. Concentrated in one place. No. <laughs> I found. I stumbled on a whole stack of. Uh, sketchbooks the other day i mean a stack oh my gosh please you know and i started looking at them and I, time to call the herd you know <laughs> well if we if we did have you know more time like i only found out about this um just like this morning um but um olivia's right you know we could uh because i have quite a collection of of prints and I have this amazing doll with all his accessories, an Osage doll, um, and even a beautiful pair of silver epaulets, you know, so um, we could totally do like a, a, a Zoom art show um, of, of incredible things that Sean has made over the last, you know, 40 years. Or in Tulsa, there's several places you could do an actual physical art show. Hey, I, yeah. I'd love to come to Tulsa. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I Tulsa is just a place I know that has multiple nonprofits. But yeah, um, yeah we should probably wrap it up. I'm so okay. glad everyone contributed. And we actually planned ahead. So um, Tuesday, December 14th on Collection Spotlight, we'll have Mary Youngbear, um, who is Miss Squawky from Iowa, from Tama, Iowa. So that'll be really exciting. So thank you all so much for spending this afternoon with us. It was a pleasure. Thank you for making it possible. Thank yeah. You. Well, <laughs> yeah, have a wonderful week, everybody. Yeah. You too. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.